It's a Monday morning. You've pressed your snooze alarm four times already, and you've realized you've only got 15 minutes to throw some clothes on, grab a, that really necessary coffee, and run out the door for that 9 a.m. meeting. And you still have to somehow impress the socks off your boss. Sound familiar? Yep, yeah. yeah, that's stress. And one of the questions I get asked most about my research is, animals get stressed? Well, just like us, animals get stressed a lot. Um, um, yeah, so, um, but stress can be useful, um, and it's necessary for survival. Um, imagine you're an antelope, and you're foraging on the lush savanna gra grasses, and suddenly a cheetah is charging at you at 70 miles per hour. But you're fine with that, you know, that's cool. Um, no worries there. I'm just going to enjoy my supper. Well, pretty soon, the cheetah is almost certainly going to enjoy their supper. Without any kind of response, your chances of survival are minimal to none. So stress is so important. And it's controlled by a series of biological secretions that culminate in the release of a group of hormones called glucocorticoids. You may have heard of cortisol. This is an example of a glucocorticoid. And so when you, as the antelope, perceive the cheetah, your stress response is activated. And the cortisol concentrations in your bloodstream are rushing and increase considerably. And this will result in you running away. This is the fight or flight response. What's concerning, however, is that animal stress responses are continually being activated over long periods of time. So they're becoming chronically stressed. And um, a, a key reason for this is climate change. Their habitats are changing so often and they're becoming more and more unpredictable. And as a result, they start to perceive their environment as stressful. Sustained periods of elevated cortisol can suppress the immune and reproductive systems. And you end up with animal populations that, can't, uh, that are susceptible to disease and have lower reproductive success, which really isn't a good combination. So we can help to prevent animals from becoming more stressed, and we can actually help ourselves in the meantime too. Why not walk or cycle into work instead of sitting in traffic for the whole morning like well, on your way to work? Little changes like this can make all the difference in helping our already um, highly, um, uh, highly um, at risk animal populations. Okay. Massive applause. Thank you very much.